I would say to those who might be attracted to his plan, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Because first of all, the Ryan plan does not balance the budget, if ever, if ever, until 2040. And it only balances in 2040 because of certain assumptions he told the Congressional Budget Office to make about his plan and the revenue contained in it. I personally don't think it ever balances. I don't believe it ever balances. And it is absolutely an unbalanced plan. All of the deficit reduction is on the spending side. He actually digs the revenue hole much deeper, extends all the Bush era tax cuts, and then adds hundreds of billions of dollars of more of tax cuts, primarily to the most fortunate among us. A trillion dollars in tax cuts for the wealthiest. He gives those with average income of over a million dollars an average tax cut of $265,000 a year. Somebody's sitting out there saying, how is that possible? A person earning a million dollars a year probably doesn't pay much more than $265,000. How can they, on average, be getting a $265,000 tax cut? Remember, this is the average for everybody over a million dollars. So this includes people making a billion dollars a year. And there are a fortunate few who make a billion dollars a year. So if you take everybody over a million dollars and you average the tax cut they get under the Ryan plan, it's over $265,000 a year. He has $2.9 trillion in health care cuts. So first of all, he extends all the Bush era tax cuts. Then he adds hundreds of billions more of tax cuts for those who are the most fortunate. And to start to make up for it, he has $2.9 trillion in health care cuts. Not million, not billion, trillion. He repeals health care reform. He shifts Medicare to vouchers. And he block grants Medicaid and cuts Medicaid drastically. And Mr. President, who benefits from Medicaid? Well, low-income people, disabled people, but also a lot of middle-income people in this country benefit from Medicaid because their folks are in nursing homes and they have spent down their assets and the only way they can stay in the nursing home is that Medicaid picks up the tab. There are hundreds of thousands of families in America, middle-class families, who have benefited from Medicaid because that's what's paid the nursing home bills for their relatives, their mom, their dad, their grandpa, their grandma. That's the truth. The Ryan budget also dramatically cuts the safety net for seniors, children, the disabled, increases uninsured by more than 30 million people. We're going to increase the number of uninsured by 30 million. Well, if you're not uninsured, why should you care? I'll tell you why you should care. Because if they aren't paid for by insurance, they're going to be paid for by all the rest of us. Because the hard reality of how the health care system works in America is this. If you're in a car accident, you don't have insurance, and you're taken to the hospital, you're treated. And if you don't have insurance to pay for it, and you don't have resources to pay for it, guess who pays for it? All the rest of us pay for it. That's why it's absolutely in our interest to have as many people insured as is possible. It's not just a nice thing to do, it's a smart thing to do. Because you know, one of the things we've found out, about a third of the people who don't have insurance can afford it. They can afford it. They just choose not to have it because they know if something drastic happens to them, all the rest of us are going to pay. Uh, Mr. President, there's also large cuts in the Ryan budget for education, for energy, for infrastructure, building roads, bridges, highways, and the rest. Those things undermine the economic, the engines of economic growth. So I don't think that's the way to go. So. If we look at the Ryan budget plan on revenue, here's what we find. Provides a trillion dollars in tax cuts for the wealthiest among us. Gives millionaires an average tax cut of more than 265,000. Does not contribute one dime of revenue to deficit reduction. And the revenues 
reach 18.7% of GDP by 2022. Now, why does that matter? Because the last five times we've balanced, the revenue of the country has been 19.6%, 19.7%, 19.8%, 20.6%. .6%. So, hey, if we're going to be serious about belling this cat, we're going to have to cut spending, we're going to have to reform the entitlements. We're also going to have to raise some revenue, hopefully not in a way that hurts economic growth, because we think we've found ways of doing it. But the Ryan tax plan, I've got to say, I don't think adds up. Why don't I believe it adds up? Well, let's look at what he proposes. First of all, he says we should reduce individual tax rates to just two, one at 10% and one at 25%. Right now, the top rate is 35%. If you reduce that rate to 25% and you have only one other rate of 10%, that package costs $2.5 trillion over the next 10 years. So instead of filling in the hole, you dig in the hole deeper. Then he puts the top corporate rate at 25%. Again, that is a significant reduction from the top corporate rate today. That costs another trillion dollars. Then he repeals the alternative minimum tax. That costs another $670 billion. Then he repeals all the tax levies in the health care reform, another $350 billion. Then he allows the stimulus provisions to expire from the Recovery Act. That's another $210 billion. So before he starts filling in the hole, he's dug the hole deeper by almost four and a half trillion dollars. And he says he's going to offset all of that with individual base broadening and corporate base broadening. Mr. President, the problem with that is if you do the math, you could do this, you could do this, because we're spending about $1.2 trillion a year in tax expenditures. So over 10 years, it's about $15 trillion with inflation. So you could come up with this $4.5 trillion but what would you have to do in order to do it? Almost every objective observer has said you'd have to raise taxes on the middle class because he says this is going to be somehow in the Romney plan revenue neutral. I don't know Ryan plan ever claimed to be revenue neutral, but if you're going to pay for this, how are you going to do it? What of the exemptions and the exclusions? Are you going to reduce the mortgage interest exemption? Are you going to re reduce the health care tax exclusion? Because those do affect middle class people. Let's be honest. Let's be straight. So there's no way that Congressman Ryan's plan does all the things he claims for it and not raising taxes on the middle class. And when he gets to a revenue level of 18.7% and says that's a historic average, that's true. The problem with that is we've never balanced the budget going back to 1969 with that amount of revenue. The five times we've balanced since 1969, that's 43 years ago, Revenue's been at 19.7, 19.9, 19.8, 20.6, 19.5. .9, so just getting back to the historic average, I don't think is going to be enough. <coughs> if we're looking at what it has taken to actually balance the budget in our history, we can see you got to be very close to 20%. And by the way, these levels of revenue were before the baby boom generation. And the baby boom generation, that's not a forecast. That's not a prediction. Those people have been born. They're alive today. And they are going to be eligible for Social Security and Medicare. And so, you know, if, if we're going to be honest with ourselves and honest with the American people, I don't think what Congressman Ryan's talking about really adds up. If we look at his budget on health care, we see $2.9 trillion in health care cuts. As I indicated, he repealed health care reform. And you know, I, I hear a lot, I hear it in my state, let's repeal health care reform. Why not? 
Why not? Because the Congressional Budget Office tells us if you repeal it, you add over a trillion dollars to the debt. You add over a trillion dollars to the debt. And you deny coverage to 30 million people that would otherwise have it. Now, Mr. President, his plan also ends the effort to promote quality over quantity of care, reopens the prescription drug donut hole that raises costs to seniors by $4,200, allows insurance companies to drop coverage when you get sick. It ends the provision allowing young adults to stay on their parents' plan until the age of 26. It shifts Medicare to vouchers in 2023 and includes after that an aggressive cap on payments that most analysts have said would dramatically increase what Medicare beneficiaries would have to pay for their own health care. Currently, Medicare pays 75% of the cost. The beneficiary pays 25%. If the Ryan plan were adopted, the original Ryan plan, he subsequently put out other plans, but his original plan would have stood that on its head. He would have Medicare beneficiary, beneficiaries paying the substantial majority of the cost. Instead of Medicare beneficiaries paying 25%, he'd have them paying 68% of the cost, Medicare beneficiaries. Now, I've got a, a brother that's gravely ill in a hospital, Medicare eligible. I can tell you he's getting phenomenal care, very costly. I tell you, it would break our family. If we had to pay 68% of the cost instead of 25%, it would break our family. And we're a middle class family. I'm talking about the extended family. So, you know, these things have real consequences. Anybody that thinks these are just, you know, political statements and they don't affect people's lives, oh yes, they do. They have a profound effect on people's lives. And the Ryan Plan block grants Medicaid, shifts the cost to seniors, children, disabled, and states. Mr. President, I really don't think that's the path America has in mind. Look, I like Paul Ryan. I agree with him that we're on an unsustainable course. I was on the Bull Simpson Commission with him, but unlike him, I was one of the 11 that supported the recommendation of Bull Simpson. And of the 11 of us who did, five are Democrats, five Republicans, and one independent. That's about as bipartisan as you can get. There were 18 commissioners. We had to get 14 to get the recommendations to a vote here in the Congress. We got 11. That's 60% of the membership voted yes. Five Democrats, five Republicans, one independent. Paul Ryan was part of Bull Simpson. He voted no because it wasn't just the way he wanted it. You know what? It wasn't just the way I wanted it either. I hated things on almost every page of that report. But as I told my staff, the only thing worse than being for it would be being against it because it would have got us back on track. It would have lowered our deficit and debt by $4 trillion and done it with revenue and spending cuts and reform of entitlements. You know, maybe not as much on any one of those areas as I would do, but you know what? It would have made a profound difference in the economic future of this country. Perhaps the most striking thing to me in all the speeches at the Republican convention was the claim by Congressman Ryan, the attack on President Obama for supporting $716 billion in Medicare savings. Why did I, why was I so taken aback by that? 
Well, because I've read Congressman Ryan's own budget. His budget has precisely that same level of Medicare savings that he now politically attacks President Barack Obama for supporting. Boy, uh, you see what former President Clinton said? He said, that takes real brass to attack somebody for something you have done. Congressman Ryan, you know, I mean, when, when you give a speech, a major speech, before tens of millions of people listening, and you attack the president for supporting $716 billion in Medicare savings, and you've got the exact same savings in your budget, shame on you. Shame on you. Mr. President, the Catholic bishops reviewed the Ryan budget, and here's what they said. They said it fails the moral test. These are the Catholic bishops of America. And look, they got issues with the president, too. I understand that. I understand that. But this is what they said about the Ryan budget. They said it fails the moral test. The nation's Catholic bishops reiterated, the, reiterated their demand that the federal budget protect the poor and said the GOP measure fails to meet these moral criteria. Mr. President, I think they got that right. Here's what a former Reagan economic advisor said about the Ryan budget. This is Bruce Bartlett, former Reagan administration economic advisor. This is what he said about the Ryan budget. And again, this is a former President Reagan economic advisor. Here's what he said about the Ryan budget. Distributionally, the Ryan plan is a monstrosity. The rich would receive huge tax cuts while the social safety net would be shredded to pay for them. Even as an opening bid to begin budget negotiations with the Democrats, the Ryan plan cannot be taken seriously. It is less of a wish list than a fairy tale, utterly disconnected from the real world, backed up by make-believe numbers and unreasonable assumptions. Ryan's plan isn't even an act of courage. It's just pandering to the Tea Party. A real act of courage would have been for him to admit, as all serious budget analysts know, that revenues will have to rise well above 19% of GDP to stabilize the debt. Mr. President, Mr. Bartlett, I don't know the man, but he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. As painful as it is, he's telling the truth. Mr. President, when we go to the question, are we better off than we were four years ago? Well, let's remember where we were four years ago. We were on the brink of financial collapse. Republican policies led the United States to the brink of financial collapse. They can't rewrite history. We know what happened. We tried their experiment. It didn't work. Now things have improved, not as much as we would like, and there's much more work to be done. But I trust in the judgment of the American people. I don't think they've forgotten. I certainly haven't forgotten. I will never forget where their policies took us in the fall of 2008. We were on the brink of financial collapse. Let's not repeat that failed experiment. I thank the chair and yield the floor.